If you missed part one, be sure to go back and watch that. We split this video into two parts because we felt like it was a little long. So we are picking right back up where we left off. Was there anything that you and Sam disagreed on belief wise when you started dating? Yes. Drinking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's your big one. So the example I gave earlier, I was the girl that was like, I will have no alcohol in my house. Never, ever. That is like a sin in of itself. Yeah. And Sam, I would say, drank. <laughs> that was about to sound bad. No, but Keep like going. I, I, uh, the word's not uh, often. Uh, uh, the word's <laughs> not often, but it's what would you say? Regularly. Oh, that doesn't sound right either. I would drink uh, in a way uh, that was not a lot. <laughs> That's awful too. I would not drink that much. I really wouldn't. Uh, so I would have, like Jacqueline said, one to two a week, maybe. And it was only in situations that were like measured. It was not like just with whoever. And you would go weeks without it and not think about it. I just wouldn't, like, if, if I got invited to a wedding and it was dry, like, I wouldn't think anything of that. Our wedding was dry. Um, if I went to um, a place or a get-together, like, I wouldn't wonder if there was alcohol and hope that there was. I would drink because, I mean, genuinely, I do enjoy the taste of wine. I do enjoy the taste of, of beer. Um, I but don't it's get not, that. It's not enough for me to, like, that. need it and come mm -hmm. home and say, oh, my gosh, I need a beer. Yeah. And and I saw that, which is why I even was dating him. Like if 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 I thought you were given to too much alcohol, I wouldn't date you. Where we differed was that I, well, first of all, I was underage, so I had no reason Don't, to drink. That's that is by. I mean, let's just stop there. If you're underage, you shouldn't drink. So anyway, back to the point. This is the longest question and. What I'm trying to say is that I had a wrong view on alcohol and I didn't really know it. I would call it a conviction, but I would say it was more legalistic. And then through difficult conversations, because I was like, well, you know, I don't want my family to have alcohol in our home. Mm. So what? And we'd have those kind of conversations and it wasn't Sam going, well, um, I am. It was really him helping me figure out, well, why? W what's your why? And that's how I figured out my heart was wrong because hmm. my why was like, well, I think that's a sin. And I didn't want to admit that because I knew the right answer. I knew it technically wasn't, but I still felt like it. So yeah. that was something we differed on that I have now changed my mind. I still think that drinking alcohol comes with many parameters many and should be done wisely and well which the we who can... the what the when the where and the why all matter go. every single one of those matters oh, that hit my ankle how to avoid getting the ick over meaningless random things it happens it does it happens it really does <sighs> i don't i don't have an answer for you i'd like okay I, I assuming I know fully what the ick is. I had to explain this to him. Like a it's it's, weeks it's ago. hard to like get rid of something like that. It is like, like the that. instant so it, turn off. The 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 def or, or the advice is not like well just get over it. You know, um, I don't know. I I, I would I, I would ask the question like why is this you know why why does this bother me so much mm. and you know is it something in myself that is wrong that 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 is not viewing it in the best way not seeing the best in the other person but again a nick is actually something really silly isn't it typically like yeah so like i don't know i don't know how you the get way over that. that you put your socks on just completely i can't even look at you the same anymore yeah. kind do you of thing. Love, ultimately it's do you love that person do you want to spend the rest <laughs> of your life with them and if that is one a resounding yes then something like that probably is not going to kill you what does guarding your heart really mean i've i hear it a lot but don't have a clear definition that comes from the verse in proverbs where it says above all else guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life and 
how I interpret that and how I think most people would is that you need to protect your heart. Well, what what is your heart, right? And I can only really give like a, a picture of like, let's say you're dating somebody and you have no boundaries, no emotional boundaries. You're just letting yourself run wild with your emotions and your feelings and you give them all of your, so to say, heart and then they go and cheat on you, right? Now you're broken up and now you've got trust issues. And that is because you gave them more of your heart than you did, than you, that, and that belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And God will always protect your heart and protect your best interests. But if you give it away in a place that is not good, that is evil or sinful, it can wreak havoc on your life. And then now think about someone that has trust issues. Their their heart is no longer, you know, a wellspring of life. I think of peace and, you know, water that is overflowing and you're never thirsty, but now you're running dry and now you're questioning everything yeah. and there's no peace there. That's like the image I would give. That I don't know so if that good. is so mean, helpful. I mean, God will always guard our hearts, Yeah. right? And, uh, you know, giving our hearts to the Lord, they will be guarded. But practically what we can be doing, I always, th I always think of like whenever someone like even just in passing says, Hey, guard your heart. I always think of, um, just being, or, or not putting yourself in situations that breed temptation mm. for sin. Um, yeah. which that's like guarding your whole self, but yeah. your, your heart eyes, is your ultimately ears. like what is, turned by those things mm -hmm. and once your heart is astray it's it's a lot more difficult you know in a moment i can think of something and my mind goes astray but the lord calls me back and you know i'm brought to if, if it's repentance i'm brought to repentance and confession um but when the heart is turned it is a repeat it, it it comes from a repeated um giving away to temptations mm. and giving away to our desires actually our desires from the heart which i i don't is not like i think there's there's a verse somewhere i don't know where but it says like the heart is deceitful mm -hmm. and you it cannot be trusted yeah and so who does it mean like also like guard it in that don't let the heart take you places don't let Maybe. the heart like yeah what to tell the 20 plus year old who hasn't really dated and feels behind yeah. 20 20 plus year old uh-huh you got time and you know what else i would say like be proud of that yeah. god has spared you from a lot because most people's story is i dated guy after guy after guy and gave my heart away to guy after guy after guy and i feel like people think i remember when i was in high school and i hadn't had my first kiss yet i felt very behind what a loot no, i'm just kidding I know. <laughs> no but and i remember being like oh I'm like you know and you questions start creeping in like well it's is do other people perceive it because no one wants me i knew it was my personal choice because you know you could easily find that in high school mm. But do people perceive it as like, well, I'm just not good enough to get that. Yeah. And, and, you know, those thoughts start creeping in. And so I'm sure the same thing happens. That is is something to actually be proud of because you're discerning. You're taking your time. You're not just giving way to the world because well, that's hard. To so that. I agree with that. Um, but I would go a step further and say, be proud of that if in this season you are oh, yeah. you like using it for your your own you, your benefit for your, with your relationship with the lord meaning if you are you know this person 20 plus and you feel behind and those thoughts consume your your headspace every day for multiple hours whenever you have free time that's all you're thinking about is like oh my gosh like you know about your relationship status if that is your day to day, and if that's your constant headspace, I would say you're not doing it right. You, you're not doing it right. You're not doing singleness right. Yeah. Uh, you're and you're not doing yourself a favor by just kind of yearning for 
something that you don't have. It, it's it's a never ending chase. Give your life wholeheartedly to the Lord in that moment because mm-hmm. there, there's a wrong way to do it and there's a right way to do it. So be proud of it if you're pursuing the Lord yeah. wholeheartedly. And, and what that looks like practically, because I feel like people would say that when I was single. I was like, well, what does that even mean? I think that means, you know, giving of your time, your energy. Like you only have to be concerned about yourself in that moment. It's like what Paul alludes to whenever he's talking about it's better to be single Mm -hmm. because you don't have to worry about your spouse and how they feel. And like you can solely be focused on God and you can focus on others and love others better technically than I can because I have Sam who we can love people well together, but now as an individual, he's my number one Mm -hmm. before these other people. Yeah. And so that is a rare time in your life. You know, statistically you're probably going to get married and so use it well and, and be proud of that time. Yeah. And, and, and don't grow cold though to the feelings that you may have. Like if, if you do feel sadness for the fact that you don't have someone like, it's not to like oh, push those aside, just trust in the Lord, like make your request known to God. Like, mm. I think that that shows great faith. Lord, like lead me to someone, um, bring someone before me. Um, I, you know, I, I have this desire in my heart and, and, and that's okay. It's not just to say like, you know, just completely <laughs> expert relationship. Marriage. Yeah, yeah. Don't want marriage. Like no, he created yeah. marriage and he, you know, he, he has a plan for your life. I mean, he said it is not good for man to be alone. Like it is natural yeah. to desire that. And it's, it's good to desire that, mm-hmm. but yeah, don't let that desire rule how you live your life in that time. So I have two left. I think the next one is an easy one. Okay. And then we can also do the last one Okay. and then wrap it up. Okay. 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 Yeah, I gotta Should get a small group. I'm I sorry. date them if they are a new believer, but I've been a believer for a while, and I think absolutely not. Um, well, assuming well, well, that let's new, define new believer. Assuming that new is like they came to Jesus. Um, I don't know. Within the honestly, like within the past year, the main thing to look for here is: do they have a track record of faithfulness? Mm-hmm faithfulness to the lord there's a verse i I, we should take back what we said i don't like putting a number like oh a year is is it because then people are gonna be like okay well they're nine months so do i wait like you know it doesn't matter about that it it matters about the track record and it matters like you can't just follow god with your with everything for one season of your life and everything's great that season and then something goes wrong or you know inevitably the the roller coaster of life takes you somewhere else and you know maybe a different side of your faith um or or a different side of that person shows and so a track record of faithfulness and i think it's really easy to spot that i think it's really easy to see that they don't have to know the bible inside and out and have a great understanding on what systemic theology is and what the (laughs) you know the transcendent divinity of the lord is Wow. Uh, to a T. Yeah. But they should have well, history. And this comes from the verse, 1 Timothy 5.24. The sins of some people are conspicuous, going before them to judgment, but the sins of others appear later. And in context, this is talking about evaluating people that should be in leadership roles in the church. And, you know, they're saying some people, it's pretty obvious, like they, their sin is all right in front of them. But some people do a really good job of putting on a show and then their sin follows. So give it some time and evaluate. I mean, dating is an evaluation process. There's no dating in the Bible, but we do know how to properly evaluate people and, you know, see what other people have to say about them. People that are they plugged into community if they're not, then how are you going to know what their track record is? You you can't watch them like that. Yeah. The, the people that they're not trying to impress to date should be the ones that are able to give a good, you know, like, yeah, this man loves the Lord. This woman is so selfless and she is radically changed by Jesus and mm-hmm. she loves him. And to have people that can testify on their behalf of that. And I think that's really important. For especially for a new believer, because 
I mean, the Bible talks about, you know, like seeds are planted and then the, they wither, the, they, they rise up really quickly yeah. and the sun scorches them. Because a lot of, you know, especially in our culture today, there's a lot of emotional responses to things in the church because, you know, there's really great music and awesome lights and everyone in the room is crying and and you really might be feeling the spirit of God move, but that doesn't mean that they're a believer. I do believe that people can feel the spirit of God move and not be a believer. Yeah. Um, and Or I should say see it move. Mm-hmm. And so it is really important that they do have a track record of faithfulness in some regard of character yeah. and action. Mm-hmm. And that I think a big thing is that their their life has a pattern of faithfulness rather than sin. Yeah, like becoming a new believer. If you were living a life of sin, 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 like partying and sex and all these things, it's going to take you a while to really repent from those things and not have that be the pattern of your life. You know exactly, and that takes time. Yeah. And I think of a, another example of just someone who just shows up and, and again, turns up the dial on the Jesus, turns up the dial on Christianity in their life, only when it's a worship night, only when it's a Bible study, only when it's church service. And then everything else about their life is chasing after everything, yeah. everything else. And it may, it may seem completely harmless. It may be good stuff. They may be really into surfing. And that's all they do with the rest of their time. But they'll go to worship nights, they'll go to Bible studies, they'll go to Sunday services. And an example like that, I think, you know, maybe you know someone like that, I don't know. But, like, it's a pattern of their life, and it's a complete changing of their pattern. So the the pattern of their life should be devoted to the Lord in most things. Mm -hmm. Um, And so if it's only just in organized uh, corporate worship stuff, and that's it, then, you know, you would ask questions. that's when it's easy. That's when it's easy. You know, easy. it's hard in the mornings when you, it's just you and God, and no one's there to pat you on the back and right. say, good job. Wow, like you look like a good Christian right yeah, now, exactly. you know. That's good. Should the man I date meet all of my expectations? You don't have to tell them how I met all of your expectations, but go ahead and tell them for the <laughs> other guys out there that may, may not meet all those expectations go ahead tell them (laughs) yeah sam met every single one of my expectations yep no (laughs) that sounded really okay well you didn't meet all mine no you actually really did meet a lot of mine but like it's impossible it's truly impossible for you to meet all of my expectations Mm -hmm. he disappoints me daily I disappoint him daily. Yeah. Well, maybe like every other day. Every other day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, no, I'm maybe joking. I'm just easy to disappoint. Mm. Who is it? You or me? Anyway, it, and so it it's it also depends on your expectations. Yeah, I, if your I, expectations I think this, are low. Like I, it's very personal. This just hits on the the topic of like you have this perfect person in mind and you want them to do all these things. And, and that's what you're looking for. Your, your list, your laundry list of qualities, personality traits, everything is just very detailed and everything. That's unrealistic in pretty much everything in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so because that's unrealistic, no, the person that you will marry will not meet all of your expectations. And you have to learn to let go of some of those. Now, let go of the right ones not the wrong ones don't let go of you know them being <laughs> having to be a believer having you know main core theology in mind uh at least 510 uh in height um <laughs> that one can go really yeah i worked hard for that <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding no yeah like things like that that are just that like god looks at the heart god cares about things of the heart and care about the things god cares about if, if he doesn't have your specific style, you know, maybe he dresses like a skater boy and you prefer a preppy boy, get over that. Like, mm-hmm. um, unless you can't. If you can't get over that, then you don't date them because they don't need that from you, you know. But really care about things God cares about and don't compromise on those things. Can I date a non-believer? That's easy. No. 
I agree. You should not. And that is biblical. If you're a believer. If you're a believer. If you're not, not a be believer, do whatever you want. Yoked. That is Yeah. And and people verse. are like, why but he's such a good guy, his morals are great. He, Maybe he'll come around. Yeah, <laughs> I can I can help him. No Don't that's that. not your job. It is dangerous. That is a dangerous place to be. Because one of you's gonna have to compromise. And let me tell you, it's probably gonna be you. Yeah. And you're gonna be compromising on your purity. You're gonna be compromising on your own faith. And next thing you know, you're gonna look and go, What have I done? Pray for them and then let them go. (laughs) Yeah. Let them don't even. That is when you need to guard your heart. Do not even guard your heart. Entertain that idea. Um, But yeah, I enjoyed this. Thank you for letting me come on to your show. You're welcome. (laughs) Okay. I hope my nasally voice wasn't too annoying. Mm. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace. Bye.